another little power bank, bank uh, purchased from eBay and uh, this one cost about four pounds which is about six dollars and it made a brief peer appearance in an earlier video because uh, when I actually compared it to another uh, power supply um, I noticed uh, there was a, some Chinese individual had got a hair trapped in it and it made me open it uh, just to get the hair out and I realized that inside is a standard um, non-soldered in battery that you can just take out so you can actually take take this old battery out and put another one in or vice versa well it's not an old battery it's a new battery obviously and I quite like that but it also let me put a meter in series to test it so using this cheapo meter because my big industrial fluke meter doesn't actually go to a low enough current so um, let's um, stick this here and measure the quiescent current the standby current is about 16 and a half milliamps which is very low that's very good I notice with this the, these power supplies they continually put out 5 volts they don't switch on when they detect a load or anything like that they just continually put that uh, supply out and if you look at the circuit board, or I suppose really the whole thing, in a very dark room, um, you can sometimes in these supplies see the little blue LED glowing. There's a, there are two LEDs, one, one that's red, and it shows when the... Um, just trying to get this back in here. Uh, one, one that glows red when the unit's charging, and a blue one to show when it's under load. And when you put the, this in, I don't know if it would show up... Um, No, it's probably not going to show up because it's uh, very dull, but it, it puts out a, uh, a just a dull blue glow. But the, the current's absolutely minute. Uh, you've seen it's just uh, microamps. I'm just going to stick that a bit of yellow plastic back on. I think that's a wee packer just to keep that terminal in position when the case is on. But anyway, uh, oh, you know what? Let's open it up and take a look at what's inside. I, I can pretty much predict what's going to be in here. Turn the meter off, get out of the way. Ooh. Okay, a single 8 pin chip, as would normally be expected. A diode, a little inductor, and a few components and LEDs. Yeah, not a lot. Um, the chip. is an FM6316FE. I seem to recall opening another unit that had identical chip. In fact, um, FM6316FE, there were various other ones like BE or, or other letters at the end. And it seemed to be evolving over time, and I th I'm pretty sure this is the most recent one. I'm just going to see if I can got any data on that. Yes, I have. Ah. So, um, a very common chip, and it basically does everything. It monitors the charging of the. Um, oh, there's that. There's a that Chinese black hair. I'll just move it out of the way. Um, it monitors the charging of the battery um, and stops it being overcharged and it also limits, it controls the switching through this 3.3 micro henry inductor and it also um, regulates that voltage to 5 volts and also when the battery voltage drops too low it'll cut the unit off. Um, so um, it's, a, it's a one chip solution for these type of things. It's interesting that the there's a programming resistor in it that seems to determine the um, current it will use to charge the battery so you can set it for different sizes of battery I suppose. Uh, maybe if you had a really high capacity battery you could choose that it was going to charge at 1000 milliamps and if it was a really tiny battery it could be 50 milliamps. Neat. The data sheet is in Chinese but it does, uh, you can work it out roughly from the voltage levels um, 
that the upper charge limit there is probably going to be that the 4.2 volts and looking down the lower charge limit is likely to be uh, where's that going to be here um, 2.85 volts looks pretty VUV low that's probably the cutoff point um, 2.85 volts but it's an interesting data sheet you can find it online it's a FM Shenzhen Fuman Electronics Co Limited um, I, I have not found that data sheet in English because I get the feeling that uh, these products are only manufactured in China so that's not really going to be applicable now I did um, put the meter across this and charge it up and the Charge current started at 600 milliamps at a battery voltage of 4 volts and progressively from about 4.1 it started dropping and at 4.2 volts it was 100 milliamps and at 4.21 it just shut off completely and the voltage dropped back down to about 4.16 so it seems to be, certainly on the charging side it seems to be doing the, the proper stuff so um, I'm just going to stick this back in it's, it's a neat design the, this terminal slots into a plastic holder, the back terminal, the negative slots into holder as well, and these just kind of line up in a well-engineered case with the front. Quite impressed by this. I've really taken a shine to these power banks as a handy battery-operated source of 5 volts for powering things other than just charging phones. Um, ideal for powering temporary lights and also for actually powering electronic props used in television and film applications because up to now I've used uh, just standard battery packs and having a standard 5 volt supply is ideal for running things like microcontrollers so I'm just going to pop this battery in here make sure it goes the right way around yeah that's, that's neat um, this is actually quite a neat little power supply. I'm going to test it for the uh, discharge voltage and see what point it cuts off. Yeah, very good value, I like that. Very standard style as well. A common case with this sort of power uh, text and power bank embossed into it. Um, but, um, so many have had have the bat battery permanently um, solder tagged in, but it's nice to see this one with the removable battery. I might get it few more for the collection and for other uses.